We greet the church with the peace of the Lord. Let's open our Bibles. In 1 Samuel chapter 9. In the Old Testament, Samuel chapter 9. 1 Samuel 9. We'll read from verse 3 to 8. From 3 to 8. First Samuel chapter 9, 3 to 8. And so says the word of our God. Now the donkeys of Kish, Kish, Saul's father, were lost. And Kish said to his son Saul, Please take one of the servants with you and arise. Go and look for the donkeys. So he passed through the mountains of Ephraim and through the land of Shalisha. But they did not find them. Then they passed through the land of Shalim, and they were not there. Then he passed through the land of Benjamites, but it, they did not find them. When they had come to the land of Zuf, Saul said to his servant who was with him, Come, let us return, lest my father cease caring about the donkeys and become worried about us. And he said to him, Look now, there is in the city a man of God, and he is an honorable man. All that he says surely comes to pass. So let us go there. Perhaps he can show us the way that we should go. Then Saul said to his servant, But look, if we go, what shall we bring the man? For the bread and our vessels is all gone, and there is no present to bring the man of God. What do we have? And the servant answered, Saul said, Saul again said, Look, I have here at hand one fourth of a shekel of silver. I will give that to the man of God to tell us our, own, our way. Lord, we praise your name. We are thankful for the communion you have given us. We ask that you, through your word, will bless your people. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The brethren may be seated. Everything that is written in the word of the Lord, the Lord says that nothing should be taken away and nothing should be nothing more should be put we see here verses that talks about names of peoples and, and cities cities and it even talks about an animal donkeys and all of this has a great significance for our lives just like there's a great significance for the people of israel we began reading the word saying the Kish, the father of a man named Saul, he had donkeys. And these donkeys became lost. The Bible, the Word of God, doesn't say how. It doesn't say how these donkeys disappeared from from out of nowhere what they had they didn't have anymore what they today in our days and here in america we know that there is not great value to a donkey but in the past israel the donkey was very important he served to help families. 
he helped get through the farms and through what they farmed. It had many, had many ways to help in Brazil where I live, and so a little time ago, this type of animal was still very used. Next to my city, there's a place called São Paulino, and there was a donkey there. And uh, and they use these donkeys to get water. But now there has been evolution with electricity and um, water through pipes. And so <laughs> this donkey, its name was Jimmy Cliff. And this donkey, he had no more use. And so we would go into the city and we would just see this donkey everywhere. And it was just abandoned by the population. And that time was Saul and Samuel. We see what we s what I said to the brother. The donkey had many uses. He was necessary for to to even to even put food on the table for the family. He was used to provide for the bread of every day so the family could eat. In the Bible, there are many times in which a donkey is present. We see the case of a, a prophet, Baal, the donkey saw what Baal wasn't seeing. There was a do there was an angel, and and the angel was going to kill Baal, and the donkey, the donkey was what made Baal realize when Jesus is going to en enter Jerusalem. The people began to praise Hosanna. Praise the name, be the one who comes from the Lord. And in the Bible, it says that he came on a donkey. And it says in the Bible, so that it, so the prophecy will be fulfilled. When Mary and her husband, Joseph, when they leave the city to go to Bethlehem, she went, she was pregnant, she went on a donkey. And it is on, it is in the Bible. And it says there, so the prophecy will be fulfilled. So the donkey was so important that it served even to, to show the fulfilling of, of prophecies. So the donkey was very important. And the donkey for us today, it represents something of value that we had. And now we don't have any more. Out of nowhere. And it just disappeared. Sometimes man has something that is valuable to them. And from out of nowhere they lose it. They have a family and from out of nowhere they lose their family. The wife has a husband and from out of nowhere he loses. She loses the, her, her, her husband. A husband has a wife, and from out of nowhere, it happens again. Sometimes children from out of nowhere are lost. Health, these things have value. And so this donkey, this donkey represents something of value we have in our lives. I had a blessing from the Lord over my life, and now I don't. I had the happiness of salvation, and now I don't. And so his father said, please take one of the servants 
and go after the donkey. We have to get it back. We can't. We can't be okay with this loss. And so the servant goes to get what they had lost. It was something. It was something valuable that was for the whole family. So. So, has the would get the inheritance of Kish. So, if his father lost something, then he technically would lose it too. So Saul goes, and they start to look for the donkey. And the Bible says that they pass through the mountains of Ephraim. And there, this word it, it means to have power to be blessed. I lost something that was very valuable in my life and now I'm going to look for it in the middle of Ephraim, in the middle of the powerful, in the middle of... Sometimes we think like this. I lost something of great importance so I'm going to look for it and uh, we're gonna look for it somewhere and some with someone that is very blessed. I'm gonna go to their house and oh, did you see my donkeys? And if they can't tell me, show me a way, and give me give me direction, maybe they'll feel bad for me. And since they have so much money. Since they're so blessed, maybe they'll help me. And the Bible says that they went there and they had no response. And they left there without any blessing. And so they now left first another place. They go to the land of Shalim. And Shalim means a place of dirt. And when we talk about dirt or land, it's talking about man. I'm going to look now. I'm going to look now for something that I lost in, in my own reasoning. And so we're going to look for it through our own reasoning, our own technology. Let's, we're going to look for it. We're going to ask for someone's opinion and maybe someone will help me. They went there and they didn't find it. They went somewhere else now. The land that we came to call Baal Shalim and it was a place of idolatry and in which that place the glory of God was not there they went there and they did, they did not find it they went to another place called the land of Benjamites and the uh, and what this word means is descendants of my son. So they went to look for the donkey in the middle of his of his family. So I'm gonna look for it with my grandpa, my grandma, my uncles, my aunts, maybe. They'll help me. Give me their opinions. Direct me, tell me where to go for me to <coughs> get what I lost. And when we talk about family, we also talk about the church. When I didn't find it anywhere else, I'm going to find it in my brother's house or inside of my own, of my own church. 
I didn't find it anywhere else. So I'm gonna... So if I didn't find it in my brother's house, I'm gonna go to my cousin's house. But nothing. They got nowhere. And sometimes our lives are like this. We go from place to place. We're trying to understand. Trying to find a way. A solution. We look, and we look, and we look. And we find nothing. But the Bible says, brethren, that they got to a place called Land of Zuf. And Zuf signifies 12. 10 plus 2, 12. And when we talk about 12, let's talk about the 12 tributes of Israel. And it is also the 12 apostles in which of the of the Holy Spirit in which we see in, in Revelation. And when they got to this land, Saul wanted to give up. And sometimes it's like that. We look, we look, and we look at every place and nothing. And so our tendency is to give up. Let's give up. There's, there's no other way. This, uh, this thing just got lost somewhere, and no one knows anything. No one helps me. Um, I don't know what to do. I'm more lost than a blind person in a shooting, and that's how they felt. And when they had this feeling in, in their heart, they were already in the land of Zuf. And that's where the blessing is. Sometimes when the brethren, when, you know, when we think about giving up, we are already in the land of Zuf. We are already in the place where God is present and where God manifests himself. They got to the land of Zuf. And he said, let's go back. Come, let us return. Let's go back. Maybe you got here today. And you thought, you know what, I'm just going to go home. I don't want to, I don't care about church anymore. God. Jesus, everything is bad in my life. I lost everything that's important to me. I didn't find help anywhere or from anyone. So I think I'm just going to go back. Who here hasn't already gone through this? How many times in a time of we weakness we think about going back? But to where would we go? If only God has the word of eternal life. Where would, we go? where would I go from your spirit? From where would I run away from you? Brethren, God is love. God is mercy. And God showed his mercy at that time. Everything that was happening to that that man, it was to fulfill the project of God in his life. Sometimes we go through afflictions and anguish, times of loss. And sometimes we don't understand that everything that we're going through, it contributes to the good of, of ourselves. They got to the land of Zuf. A citizen there, the citizen there that was with Saul, he said, Look, 
there is in this city a man of God. And he is an honorable man. All that he says surely comes to pass. The man of God is the Holy Spirit of God. What he says it comes to pass in everyone's lives. The Bible says that our God is The Bible says that our God is flawless. Everything that he says will flawlessly come to happen. Since we're in the land of Zuf, the Lord shows us the way that we should go. There's a text in the Bible that says, and listen to the voice that is behind you. This is the way. Don't go to the left or don't go to the right. The Bible says then that Saul and then Saul said but look, if we go, what shall we bring the man? What could, what could I take to the man of God? It was a custom in Israel. When someone would go to someone's house or their prophet's house, they would take something. And Saul says two things here. He says, For the bread in our vessels, is all gone and there is no present to bring to the man of God Saul looked to his heart and he said that there was nothing else the word of God the project of God for the people of Israel for the life of the church what God had said and what many times God says to to me, says to the brethren, and then when we look to our heart, that hope is already gone. And no more bread. The word is done. Saul was already hungry. There was no bread. Are you, are you? Do you remember the prodigal son? In the Bible, it says it, it talks about how the prodigal son went back, went back to the place with bread. He said, "In my father's house, there is abundance of bread. If you ran out of bread, come to the the house of the Lord." The bread of life is here to bless you. I don't have any more bread. And I don't have a present. When Jesus was born, some citizens went there. And what did they take for Jesus? Presents. Three types of presents. Gold. Frank, Frank, Frankesis and metal. And the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Sometimes you get to the Lord's house and there's no more. And you have no more bread. And you have no more gratitude. You have no more reason to glorify. You have no more, no more reason to exalt. And you get here and you're not happy. And I'm not criticizing you. I go through this too. Sometimes you get here and, and you come with nothing dead and have mercy on me Lord that is how that citizen was 
he had nothing. What will I give to the Lord for everything he has done for me? Drink the wine and praise the Lord. That is it. Accept the project and praise for this project that we accepted in our life. He had nothing. <coughs> but the man that was with Saul, he said, Look, I have here at hand one fourth of a shkiel of si silver. That's like almost 12 grams. It's almost 12 grams. <laughs> if he has one fourth of 12, let's go to math. How much is left? Three. 12, 12 apostles of the Holy Spirit, and 12 tributes to Israel, and then now 12. And then now he has one fourth of twelve, which is three, and represents Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There was a servant next to Saul to not let him to not let him give up, brethren. The Bible says that the church is the body of Christ, and. S since we are part of a body and we are part of the same project, sometimes we are seeing everything that is happening. But there are many servants here to not let you, to not let you give up. God is very good. Glory be to Jesus. He always comes with his comfort. He always provides. He will always use someone to bring a word, a word to help you and give you hope. And if there is, and if there is no one to help, God uses even the rocks. Amen. And that is why, brethren, that is why we are here tonight. We are in the land of Zuf. You know to who that city belonged to? What family? That city belonged to the family of Samuel. The name Samuel means listen from God. Samuel's mom is called Anna. And one of the translations is Grace. His father is named Okana. And one of the translation is force and power and also consolation. He was in the land in which Samuel and which Samuel would listen to God. In the land of grace and in the land of consolation. That is where God wanted to work. And that is where God has taken us to to talk to about to talk to our lives. The Bible says that when he got to when he got there everything was already prepared. One day before God spoke to Samuel. Go to the land of Zuf and prepare there a sacrifice. And a citizen will get there who is worried about a donkey. You are going to meet him at the door and you are going to reveal to him the project I have for his life. When he got there, the Bible says that everything was prepared. There was a banquet prepared for Saul. A part just for him. 
Saw means lost. Samuel to listen from God. So, so and the man is lost, and then the Lord sends his blessing. Samuel was there to make a sacrifice. He was there to do a service for the Lord. We came to the house of the Lord to glorify His name for all the things He has done for our lives. It was a service in which there was a banquet prepared for Saul. Brethren, you are in the service and the Lord has already prepared the banquet for every one of us. And He already has an answer. He didn't get an answer anywhere else, but there in the land of Zuf, he found uh, he found an answer. It is in the presence of the Lord that we find the answers, because Christ, because Jesus is the answer. The Bible says that the encounter was at the door. Look, the encounter at the door, the door has to be open. There is a song that says, He will open the door for you, but in this situation, the door is already open. The door is already open when Jesus died for our sins. When He said that everything was consumed, He already prepared it there. All the way, all the way back there, the door was already open. The encounter at the door is the encounter under the blessing, the grace, and the mercy of God. It is the encounter. It is the encounter with the Holy Spirit. The encounter at the door. And he got to saw and he says, don't worry. You came here. W worried? Don't worry. The donkeys? He didn't even need to say the problem. That problem? Just, you're okay. You can go back to your house and everything will be fine. God already resolved everything. He said, come here, Saul. There is something else you don't know. Your worries with the donkeys. But the worry with our God is with your life. It is with your soul. I don't have just a soul for you. I, I don't have just uh, health or something from the world for, me, for you. He said, I have much more. Brethren, it's not just... It's, it's a cure, it's, it's fixing a home, but it goes way beyond. What doesn't go into the heart of man, so maybe you came here worried with the things of this world, but the Lord had something more for Saul, brethren. The Lord has something more for your life. You know what happened? The grace of God was upon him. What the Lord wants is not just to bless you in the things of this life, but to bapt baptize, baptize you with the Holy Spirit, prepare you to go to heaven, He ate, he fulfilled his thirst, and he left that place under God. God brought you here tonight so you could drink, eat, become happy, and know that you have gained back what you had lost. And so that you know that the grace of God is in your life, it is now in your home. 
That is the blessing of God. The Lord showed a man who got to his house tonight and he was and then he was being chased. And the hand talks about the work and he was hurt. But the Lord said that he was working to cure him. God will always use the church, will always use his body to help the man who is having difficulty in the walk and the man who is having difficulty in fulfilling the project of the Lord. And the grace of God does this, it regenerates. And that is what he wants to do tonight. He wants to regenerate your place in the body, your place in his presence. The Lord also showed that we should sing a song. The song that says, God, I really wanted to see. You guys know it? Is it possible? God, I really wanted to see encounter. It's special for you, my brother. This portion is for you tonight because God loves you. And God worries about your life.
the church will be standing. Let's have a word of glorification for our God. Lord, we praise your name because you are our God. Because you are the God that blesses us each day. We bless we thank you because one more day we are still in your presence. We thank you, Lord, because we we don't deserve this love, but you still bless us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, because we understand that every day that you're you're coming, that you will come, that you are coming soon. Your church is prepared. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. you for this great night we thank you for your word we thank you for your love and we say that in your name the grace of Jesus Christ be with all the brethren now and forever amen the brethren may be seated you that are here with us tonight if you came here tonight, if you need any assistance, if you need prayer, if you need, if you have any questions about the service, the brethren here, the brethren are here to assist you. I'd like to remind everybody that tomorrow morning at 10.30, we have our Sunday school, and then everyone is invited. 
tomorrow at 10.30 in the morning. And then tomorrow night at 7.30 p.m. We have service again. We thank you for coming. And let's invite everyone for tomorrow night because we know that the Lord will bless them. Thank you.